So do you need a high-end servo for your no prep drag RC car? Some people say no, some people say yes, I say maybe. Let's talk about it right now on the channel. What's going on guys, I'm Chad, welcome back to the channel going to talk a little bit about servos today. Before that, take a look here at the bench, a little messy. What I'm working on is fast and the furious decals for my super body. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how that turns out. I think it's going to be freaking awesome. I cannot wait. Guys, I have a little bit of time off work, so I'm going to be pumping out all kinds of stuff about this car. This being the first video, let me know what you guys want to see next. We're going to be doing the shocks. I've got some 3D printed parts to add on here. Tires, I've got the body being painted. I'm doing the decals. Maybe you guys want to see how I'm doing that. Whatever, just let me know. Spur, all kinds of stuff going on. Let me know what you want to see first and I'll just kind of release them like that. So let's get on with this video. So if you take a look right here, you're gonna see just your basic run of the mill tracks of servo. I think this came out of my TRX4 Sport. Been an okay servo and everything. The one thing about using a lower quality servo though like this is they don't center very well. The other thing, they're kind of unpredictable. I kind of shored everything up with this last year by moving to getting rid of the servo saver and just going with the actual uh, associated arm here, which fits perfectly. The real tight tolerances inside here, so you really gotta watch out for that, but it works perfectly. Now, some people like myself, I'm all about getting better servos. I don't think you gotta spend a bunch of money, but unfortunately you're kind of in that like 30 to 40 price dollar range or you're into that $100 range. In my last video about the Macklin ESC, told you guys that I got this Reefs 299 going on right here. And the reason why I settled for this one was because don't need a lot of power, but it's nice to have a, some extra. The size, because this is kind of a weird slot right here. It's 38 and a half millimeters, I believe. And most of the standard cheaper servos you can get off of Amazon will not fit in here. I had a couple of those that I tried. They were just kind of too tall right here where all this hooks together. So I ended up going with this. This is gonna fit in there great. The other great thing about having a more higher powered servo and one that's built just better quality, metal gears and all that kind of stuff is it's gonna just help your car track straighter because you're not gonna have to worry about losing center, which is something that I battled a lot, a lot with last year, constantly having to adjust and change things. The other thing is, is if you're driving down the road and you hit some rocks or something like that, it's just gonna be able to handle those imperfections in the road a lot better. Of course, we're gonna get capability to run higher voltage which we may or may not need we're going to get more torque and all that steering power built into these and this thing just looks good and it's going to last for a long time if i ever get out of no prep or if i want to build a different car this will be a perfect swap out to any other car that i have so what i want to do here is just kind of turn the car on and i don't really know how much this is going to show but we're just going to kind of show like the steering rate and everything like that with kind of the standard servo. I have it trimmed out a little bit still from my last uh, year and everything. I've got my endpoints cut off at like 80. Uh, so we're not getting like full travel, but you can just kind of see I'm not doing anything crazy. I have no expo or nothing dialed into here at all yet. But, you know, that's pretty much like the power that we're looking at there. Fine control seems to be working good. But again, you know, just a little bump in the road is going to, you know, just kind of, you can hear it just kind of twitching and struggling a little bit. So we want to try to avoid that, be able to absorb those kind of things and track straighter. So we're going to put that in here, see how it fits, see if I run into any problems. And then we'll come back and we'll do that little test again and see how 
to see how it sounds and see how it looks. Be right back. That was literally a five minute job, guys, and totally worth it. Just look right here, how sweet that looks. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see plenty of room inside here. Looks good. Everything just went together perfect. The best thing, guys, is just listen how quiet this is. Nothing. No servo whine, no nothing at all. Super quiet. You barely even can hear it. Good response. Really, really happy with the way this is working. Cannot wait to get this thing out on the track. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this quick little video. We will be back with more to come with this DR10 build. Thanks a lot. And see you later.